Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all. It is really a pleasure for me to present a fascinating talk today. I love chocolates and I'm sure many of you do as well. My daughter loves chocolate so much we call her chocoholics. She said chocolates make her happy. Interestingly, dogs and cats gets very sick if they ingest chocolates. Why is this so? This is because of the presence of a chemical compound called theobromine in chocolates. This chemical is actually being made in the cacao fruit that gives us our chocolate. So, this is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the chemicals that are produced by nature especially in plants. From nature, we have obtained many important and useful chemicals. One such example is aspirin. Historically, as early as 300 BC, Hippocrates has mentioned the use of willow bark for pain in childbirth. Gerard in 1597 mentioned some roots which are boiled in wine and, and useful against all pains. And in 1899, Bayer and company marketed aspirin, which is, stands for acetyl salicylic acid derived from Spiria species. And now, aspirin is the world's most consumed drug on a daily basis. So, whenever the word chemical is mentioned, most of us will have this picture in mind. Well, it is true that many chemicals are synthetically produced in the lab. But more fascinatingly, there are a huge number of chemicals which are produced by nature, especially by plants, microorganisms, and also animals. Plants is actually an amazing chemical factory, as written by Anthony Huxley in his book, Green Inheritance. Every plant is a chemical factory for complex substances which exceeds any human capability. In their poisons, antibiotic agents, prickles and foul taste, they developed defense against attack long before human stockades and pesticide. So, why does plants produce chemicals? They are produced for many reasons. Okay. For seed disposal, for defense, against herbivores, for plant communications, and also for protection. The natural chemicals that are produced by nature are called the natural products. We can basically classify the natural products into two which are the primary metabolites and the secondary metabolites. The primary metabolites such as carbohydrates, amino acids and fats are essential for the metabolism and growth in the living organism. Whilst the secondary metabolites such as the alkaloids, flavonoids, quinones and terpenes are needed for survival and adaptational mechanism. And these type of chemicals are more specific and um, are more unique and biologically more specific. The chemicals in plants are produced through a very sophisticated pathways. Most of these reactions are catalyzed by specific enzymes and thus producing a complex array of chemicals. Besides uh, many other useful applications, natural products are important as pharmaceutical agents. As uh, reported by Newman and Craig in, in their recent review, about 46% of the recently approved of the drugs that, has, that are approved between the year 1981 to 2019 are of natural products at origins. 
Of them, 43% are anti-cancer drugs, 60% are anti-diabetic drugs, 55% are antibacterial drugs, 60% are anti-parasitic drugs, and about 79% are anti-glaucoma drugs. And an example which should be quite uh, familiar to many of us is a drug, is two drugs that was discovered from this plant, Cataranthus roseus from Apocynaceae family, or maybe better known locally as Camon Tingchina. A phytochemical research on the alkaloidal fraction of this plant yielded vincristine and vimplastin, which were approved as chemotherapeutic agents in the 60s by FDA. Undeniably, the plants used in traditional medicines are mostly due to the chemical presence that are present in them. Artemisinin, for example, was discovered by Professor Tu Yu Yu. And uh, Professor Tu Yu Yu, for this, for this di discovery, won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015. Artemisinin was isolated or discovered from a Chinese traditional herb called Ginkgo or Artemisia annua. Looking at the structure of artemisinin, a chemist can easily appreciate that only nature is creative enough to produce this type of compounds which contain so many stereocenters, which gives it a, three a unique three-dimensional uh, structure, which is important in a biological action. So how about Malaysia? We have been acknowledged as the 12th most diverse nation in the world with one of the most one of the world's oldest rainforest we have about 17000 higher plants among which 3000 species have medicinal values many of these plants are still unexplored so there are many many interesting plants for us to study for example let's look at these two interesting local plant cucoligo latifolia and sincipalum dulcificum it was noticed that some compounds present in this plant have a taste modifying effect what does it mean it means that if you take one or two of these magic fruits whatever that you eat afterwards will taste sweet instead of sour isn't that interesting? The science of exploring the chemistry of plants is called phytochemistry. Research in this area can be likened to finding a golden, need, golden needle in a haystack. With the overall aim of finding or discovering bioactive substances, the research work involves a lot of separation chemistry, utilizing various techniques of chromatography, followed by spectroscopic techniques to elucidate the structure, coupled with a relevant bioassays. I will take this opportunity to share some work by my research group. Quite a while back, we studied this plant which is dubbed the Malaysian ginseng. The scientific name is Renilia elliptica. My former student, Dr. Cik Putih Osman, managed to isolate a series of anthraquinone compounds from the yellow roots. Several of the compounds were found to have promising antiplasmodial activity, which could be further developed into uh, potential anti-malaria agent. A more recent work is on Goniothalamus lanceolatus, an and ethno-medicinal plant endemic to Sarawak. 
The leaves of this plant are used by the indigenous people to treat infection or quench fever, while the stem bark is sometimes used as a cancer remedy. Dr. Nurviki and Dr. Idaya, after very careful phytochemical work, isolated a group of compounds called bisterolactones and naphtoquinone, naphtoquinone alkaloids. Some of these compounds were able to inhibit the proliferation of uh, lung and colorectal cancer cells. We are continuing the study on this plant, looking now into potential anti-dengue compounds. Definitely, natural compounds are most beneficial to humankind. But are all natural compounds safe? Does natural mean safe? Let me try to answer this question using an example. This plant is called Atropa belladonna. The word belladonna means beautiful women in Italian, referring to its use in cosmetic. It was said that Cleopatra have used the extract of this plant to dilate her pupil, making her eyes look big and beautiful. We now know that atropine is used as a drug to dilate the eyes now. On the other hand, this, is, this plant is one of the most toxic plants ever known. For that, it is called deadly nightshade. Its use as poison goes back to the ancient Roman era. The Roman em em emperor Augustus was said to be murdered by his wife using a poisoned from these fruits. The toxicity of Atropa belladonna is due to the tropin alkaloids that are present in the plant. These tropin alkaloids can also be found in other species such as Datura species. In fact, the tropin alkaloid is quite common across the Solanaceae species uh, family which are the family of tomatoes, potatoes, as well as eggplants. So you might have been cautioned against eating green tomatoes and green potatoes. This, this could be the reason. My message is, while natural products are useful and beneficial to us, we do need to be respectful and mindful of the chemistry and biological biology within. As beautifully said by Paracelsus, all things are poison and nothing is without poison. The dosage alone makes it so a thing is not a poison. So, for the wandering phytochemist in me, nature is not just beauty. It is full of secrets waiting to be unveiled by the keen eyes and curious mind of a scientist. Thank you for your attention.